we are done with behaviorist perspective. Now, let us proceed to cognitive perspective. And under it is Gestalt Psychology. Gestalt Psychology was at the forefront of the cognitive psychology. It served as the foundation of the cognitive perspective to learning. It opposed the external and mechanistic focus of behaviorism. It considered the mental processes and products of perception. Gestalt theory was the initial cognitive response to behaviorism. It emphasized the importance of sensory holes and the dynamic nature of visual perception. The term Gestalt means form or configuration. Psychologists Max Bertheimer, Wolfgang Kohler, and Kurt Kafka studied perception and concluded that perceivers or learners are not passive but rather active. These are the image of the psychologists I mentioned earlier. They suggested that learners do not just collect information as is, but they actively process and restructure data in order to understand it. To understand it. This is the perceptual process. Certain factors impact on this perceptual process, like past experiences, needs, attitudes, and one's present situation can affect their perception. According to the just gestalt psychologist, the way we form our perceptions are guided by certain laws or principles. These principles are laws or laws determine what we see or make of things or situations we meet. These are the Gestalt principles. The first law is law of proximity. Elements that are closer together will be perceived as a coherent object. When objects are perceiving or near each other, we perceive them as belonging together. In the picture, the only thing differentiating the group on the left from those on the right is the proximity of the lines. And yet, your brain interprets the image on the right as three distinct groups. The second law is law of similarity. Similar elements are visually grouped regardless of their proximity to each other. They can be grouped by color, shape, or size. As you can see, the squares here are all equally spaced and the same size, but we automatically group them by color, even though there's no rhyme or reason to their placement. The third law is the law of closure. Closure is one of the coolest gestalt principles and one I already touched on the beginning of this piece. It's the idea that your brain will fill in the missing parts of a design or image to create a whole. The gestalt principle of closure is illustrated beautifully in the World Wildfire Fund's panda logo. The brain completes the white shapes even though they are not well defined. The fourth law is law of good continuation. Individuals have the tendency to continue contours whenever the elements of the pattern establish an implied direction. People tend to draw a good continuous line. The eye tends to want to follow the straight line from one end of this figure to the other and the curved line from the top to the bottom even when the lines change color midway through. The fifth law is the law of good pregnancy or symmetry and order. What this principle says is that 
your brain will perceive ambiguous shapes in as simple as possible. For example, a monochrome version of the Olympic logo is seen as a series of overlapping circles rather than a collection of curved lines. The sixth and last law is the law of figure or ground. Your brain will distinguish between the objects it considers to be in the foreground of an image or the figure or focal point, and the background, the area on which the figures rest. Where things get interesting is when the foreground and the background actually contain two distinct images, like this. The idea of insight learning was first developed by Wolfgang Kohler, in which he described experiments with apes where the apes could use boxes and sticks as tools to solve problems. In the box problem, a banana is attached to the top of a chipmunk's cage. The banana is out of reach but can be reached by climbing on and jumping from a box. Only one of Kohler's apes, which is Sultan, could solve this problem. A much more difficult problem, which involved the stacking of boxes, was introduced by Kohler. This problem required the ape to stack one box on another and master gravitational problems by building a stable stack. Kohler also gave the ape sticks, which they used to rake food into the cage. Sultan, Kohler's very intelligent ape, was able to master a two-stick problem by inserting one stick into the end of the other in order to reach the food. Kohler, which is one of the Gestalt psychologists, proposed the view that insight follows from the characteristics of objects under consideration. His theory suggested that learning could occur when the individual perceives the relationships of the elements before him and organizes these elements and come to a greater understanding or insight. This could occur without reinforcement and once it occurs, no review, training, or investigation is necessary. The main principles of the Gestalt theory in learning. First, teachers should encourage their students to discover the relationship of the elements that make up a problem. Second, incongruities, gaps, or disturbances are essential stimuli in the learning process. Third, educational instruction should be based on the laws of organization. And that wraps up the topic about Gestalt psychology under the cognitive perspective. References And that ends my report about the behaviorist perspective and the cognitive perspective. Goodbye! I hope you learn a lot. See you next time.